My view on COVID is it is serious. We should take serious steps to combat it. We have taken extraordinary steps to combat COVID-19, including an unprecedented effort to develop vaccines, hundreds of millions of which have been administered as we've come together and fought against this disease. But we've also seen stupid policies. We've seen lockdowns across this country that have shut down small businesses, destroyed restaurants, destroyed bars, destroyed, destroyed generational businesses. We've seen schools shut down, 10 for over a year. Children who are falling behind academically, who are falling behind in reading, who are falling behind in math. And the children being hurt are disproportionately low income. They are disproportionately Hispanic and African American. And nonetheless, the edicts to shut down schools have continued. They were utterly unjustifiable. My view is simple. We should not have mandates. What does that mean? That means no mask mandates. That means no vaccine mandates. And I will say, you know, it was interesting as I was reading through this COVID bill, Section 107, talking about what foreign governments are doing. An awful lot of the description of foreign governments can, can apply to our own government. So Section 107 of this bill says, certain foreign governments have taken measures in response to COVID-19 that violate the human rights of their citizens without clear public health justification. Well, I think you could delete the word foreign in that because we've seen governments here domestically arbitrarily exercising power as well. This Section 107 also says governments using the COVID-19 pandemic as a pretext for repression have undermined democratic institutions, check, debilitated institutions for transparency and public integrity, check, quashed legitimate dissent. I might remind you that Anthony Fauci in those emails asked Facebook to silence anyone who said anything different than the government directive on speech, including if you suggested the origin of the Wuhan virus was actually in Wuhan, China, in a Chinese government lab. And Facebook willingly complied, censored that view. You're not allowed to have that view that this escaped from the government lab. Then, miraculously... A couple of months ago, the administration was forced to recognize, well, yeah, there's actually very significant evidence that the Wuhan virus escaped from a Chinese government lab in Wuhan. And beyond that, that it may well have been developed with government research with American taxpayer funding on gain-of-function research. Those views that were banned for a year are now acknowledged as having very significant scientific basis behind them. My view, there should be no mandates, no mask mandates, no vaccine mandates, and no vaccine passports. And what my amendment focuses on is just the last piece of it, vaccine passports. And I will say, finally, this should be a proposition that is bipartisan. The Biden administration at least claims to oppose vaccine passports. Jen Psaki at the White House said, let me be clear on this. I know there's a lot of questions. Psaki said, the government is not now, nor will we be, supporting a system that requires Americans to carry a credential. If that is right, if that is credible, then I would urge the committee to adopt my amendment prohibiting U.S. taxpayer funds from going to or the American government participating in an international body creating a vaccine passport that would be required for Americans traveling abroad. I have a number of questions and concerns about the substance of this amendment. However, the text of this amendment is clearly outside the scope of the Foreign Relations Committee's jurisdiction. Indeed, the text is drawn directly from S-1932, a bill sponsored by the senator from Texas that has been referred to the HELP Committee. This amendment prohibits the use of federal funds for the creation of a vaccine passport system or vaccine track tracking database, including at the state level, and it requires that COVID-19 vaccination records be destroyed by all federal departments and agencies. Neither of these issues fall within our committee's jurisdiction. Accordingly, I rule this amendment out of order. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Senator from Texas. Mr. Chairman, I think that jurisdictional argument is uh, not justifiable based on the underlying bill. Uh, the underlying bill is about policies engaging in a bilateral basis in response to COVID. This amendment 
is prohibiting participating in an international organization creating a vaccine passport. This bill talks about vaccine monitoring, uh, and this amendment set ensures that we're not establishing a federal government vaccine database that is monitoring U.S. citizens in violation of their privacy rights. This bill talks about enhancing transparency of health data, and, and I think the amendment would protect the privacy of health data uh, from a vaccine passport. Uh, and this bill also talks about establishing partnerships with the private sector to improve pandemic preparedness and response. It addresses the same topic, to prevent the U.S. government from working with a third party in the private sector to develop a vaccine passport and force it on the American people. And so accordingly, I, I appeal the ruling of the chair that the amendment is out of order. Senator Pierce, the ruling of the chair that the amendment is not in order because